Hello everyone and welcome to Bionadon's Mods. This is Otaku Showboat, joined by Ollie and Dolly. Since the release of Pi Alternative Energy, many things have changed with the entire set of Pyanodon's mods. The full mod suite, as I like to call it. In particular, Ash is now a thing that you need to deal with from the beginning of the game. When you start the game, you will have access to burner mining drills to access your iron, your copper, your stone, and your raw coal. The issue that you may face is that coal, raw coal, is a chemical fuel. It is one of multiple chemical solid fuels. It counts. It, it, that, is, that is basically what it is called. It is called a chemical fuel, or at least here it's called a burnable fuel in the Pyanodon's Codex. Uh, for solid fuel values. This is a brand new resource that has just recently been added. Uh, it's been here for a while for the list of the fuels and their fuel values, but now it's sortable. You can sort by name, by fuel category, by fuel value, by burnt result. And when you get access to it, what we'll be looking at today are those burnable fuels because raw coal results in ash when it is used much like nuclear produces spent fuel rods like the spent uh used nuclear cells whatever they're whatever they're called here yeah the used uranium cells in the vanilla game those are the only thing in the vanilla game that actually produce a uh, burnt result like this. Pandods Mods adds a few more things that uh, have a burnt result. So, what do you do with this ash? What, what, what do you do? How do you design around having ash? That is what we will be going over today. How, how do we deal with ash? Ash, as a spent fuel result, sucks. To be completely honest, it sucks. Why does it suck? Because every single loader entity mod that you may have, with one exception, will not be able to unload the spent fuel result of Ash. Essentially, every loader mod that is coded as a loader will not be able to output from the spent fuel result inventory. Many loaders should. I have not tested, but many loaders, because many loaders are inserters, very fast inserters, they can help you out. But even without loaders, what do we have? We have, at the beginning of the game, this thing called the mechanical inserter. The mechanical inserter has a page on the codex. It does not need fuel. It does not need power. It, pr it is able to operate at 0.6 items per second for its operation speed with regular inserters at 1.2, long-handed's at 1.2, uh, and then the fast versions at 2.4, scaling, of course, higher with inserter tech bonuses, but at the very beginning of the game, you have these little mechanical inserters. These are filter inserters, single filter item inserters. You can use them in whitelist or blacklist format. So what you do, what you will have to do, is you will have to use your mechanical inserters on every burner mining drill that you have in your base. And you have to make sure that they are whitelisting ash to output. 
you also need to have mechanical inserters to provide fuel to these. Now, you will be able to make underground belts. You will not be able to make splitters. So, uh, at least very early on, uh, we have the uh, initial technologies here, logistics. This takes science. You have to get to science before you even unlock splitters, and they need circuits. So, it, yeah, it will take a bit of time. It will take a bit of time to, uh, to do. You start the game, and you're basically taking coal processing at the beginning of the game, and very, uh, through handcrafted automation science packs. But, anyway, this is the general layout. You, of course, can mirror everything and there you go there you have it now for rock hole what you will likely end up doing because you don't have splitters is using mechanical inserters as splitters to actually go down to fill your burners with fuel why is this the case? Well, why why you have to do this when they can feed themselves? Yes, they can feed themselves at the very beginning of the game. Yes, you can absolutely do this. You should absolutely do this at the very start of the game. They will have ash as their spent products. You will want to do something along these lines while throwing things, throwing that ash into chests. Speaking of which, what do you do with the ash? All that you can do at the beginning of the game is throw it into chests. You won't have loaders at the very beginning, so you have to like have these lines of mechanical inserters, noting that they are 0.6 items per second on the mechanical inserters. Throw them into boxes. Ash stacks to 1,000 units per stack. Of course, these are steel chests. They have more slots available than what you'll have at the very beginning of the game. You can use wooden chests, you can use iron chests. The iron chests have uh, 32 slots, 32 times a thousand. It will last you a little bit. Unfortunately, this is all you can do at the very beginning of the game. This, that's it, that's it. So, either something like this at the very start of the game to get extra rock hole to use through manual placement for your iron and your copper lines and ideally some stone. This is a little bit later when you are thinking about doing full automation, more more automation around your base using belts once you have some production of the iron and copper and you want to start doing as much automation as you can. You can't really get around having to do uh, things manually for quite some time, but this gets you really close to it. This also applies, of course, to boilers. This, this also applies to boilers. Boilers, when using raw coal, will produce ash. You have the same limitations. You will have to have a whitelisted inserter to output the ash. I will note that because raw coal has a fuel value of 3 megajoules, it has a fuel value of 3 megajoules. You will need to have at least two mechanical inserters here. You will need to have two to fully output the ash. You will also need two to fully input the raw coal so that you can produce steam through this boiler. I will note that at the beginning of the game, though, you don't have access to the gas uh, burner as well. So, And this water well is from a different mod. So, at the very beginning, if you want to, like, do something with steam, this is, generally speaking, how you have to do it. And if you have a line of steam, well, it will look a bit like this, I think, for most individuals uh, at the beginning of the game, as I overwrite everything because I can't actually draw a straight line for the life of me. But you do that, you, you can stick your uh, steam engines on the end of that, uh, and just note that you are making 
7.5 steam per boiler and the steam engines somewhere in here steam engines will consume seven uh, they will consume up to 15 so it's one steam engine for every two boilers one engine for every two boilers and the engine will produce 7.3 megawatts from your seven ish uh, fuel value that you throw at the system you don't need particularly much power at the very beginning of the game there are a few buildings that run specifically off of power but your assembling machines will not assembling machines at the very beginning of the game are burner assembling machines so all of the vanilla sized assembling machine entities are now burner entities if i can find them in my list here you have access to these these same deal fuel in and spent result out i will note right now not all fuels that you have access to at the very beginning of the game will result in a spent ash fuel result namely wood and logs do not result in ash as a spent fuel result and you will not have to deal with the ash fuel result on your assembling lines if and only if you choose to use the uh, uh, wood or other more biological fuel for your burner assemblers same applies to boilers and same applies to burner mining drills the issue is that of course you would have to actually make said wood if you want to automate things and that takes a lot of resources in the early game if you want to do that time that could have been otherwise spent actually progressing so do bear this in mind now, of course, for all of your assembling lines, you're going to also need to provide a fuel when you are interested in doing automation at the very beginning of the game. You just have chests, boxes, whatever. You, you, you're just dealing with boxes. It's still going to be the same with, uh, with this. You might want to have something that's... Uh, blacklisting ash and one that's whitelisting ash so that you have the box of your main output that you're looking for separate from the box of the ash uh, and then just have some fuel with your ingredient inputs uh, on your assembling machines and have this for whatever item that you need to make at that given point in time with all that said let us now progress a little bit to the point of we've been able to ha we are now able to handcraft automation science what happens then well at that point you want to try to pick up ash separation which is coal processing one into steel processing into ash separation you will need to make some steel for this steel is different from the way it used to be i will have a separate video covering iron and iron processing later uh, just for now note that steel is closer to how it is done in angels and other mods uh, at the very beginning of the game where you are going to have to uh, actually cast steel uh, using coke and you have to like make some coke uh, to throw at your steel but that being said you will gain access to recipes to two recipes right uh, right in here let's let's have a look at this you will gain access to separator recipes solid separator recipes these solid separator recipes one 
takes ash and converts it into coal dust, iron oxide, and soot. 50% chance of coal dust, 5% chance of iron oxide, and 20% chance of soot. The other recipe takes soot and sorts it into various ores, as well as a chance at getting some of the ash back, a unit of the ash back, in the worst case. This is how you will deal with your ash in the intermediate term uh, until you finally get access to burners, because ultimately burning is how you will deal with your ash. Uh, burners will require titanium to get into. Uh, they are unlocked at Pi Science 1. You have to go all the way up to Pi Science 1, your, ne your next tech level, to unlock these steel, titanium, iron, and stone furnaces. But once you have them, ash is no longer a problem, and you will likely systematically have to go across your, your existing base at that point to replace your sorting of ash with burning of ash. Note that you can make use of most of these products. You can make use of the ores that come out of this. You can uh, convert iron oxide into iron plates through smelting. And you can burn coal dust into ash and void the steam that's produced out of that and then cycle the ash back. How do you void steam is a wonderful question to answer. At the very beginning of the game, you have access to the tailings pond, which I will try to find in my inventory. There you are. This is the new tailings pond. It has uh, had a graphical update uh, for the release of Pi Alternative Energy. Uh, this tailings pond has an entry in the codex. If you give it a gas, such as steam, the gas is immediately vented into the atmosphere, destroying the gas. If you give it a fluid, it will store the fluid up to the maximum uh, inventory size of the tailings pond, and then it will overflow all of it onto the ground, apparently producing this highly flammable pollution tile around the tailings pond. Hi highly flammable. Do not, uh, d don't launch a grenade at it. Cough, cough. You can remove the fluids from the pond by connecting a pump to an output. Really, it's... It's just normal fluid mechanics to get the stuff out. It, it, it's, a, it's a tank. It's a tank. It's a really big tank. And you can pull stuff out of the tank uh, more efficiently by using, uh, by using pumps when you get access to pumps. So, that is Ash and how we can deal with Ash as we go along. The beginning of the game is a matter of storing it in as many boxes as possible, making sure to periodically spam down a bunch of extra boxes, clear out the automation sets of boxes, and shove ash into more, like, temp storage boxes, doing the same thing when you need electricity, and setting up your assembling lines, bearing in mind that you have to have the ash as an output and a fuel as the input, which complicates the logistics a little bit, but it makes for some interesting designs. All that, and then you get access to sorting to kick the can down the road a little while if you are not using these uh, ore types that are coming out of this. Even, even if you don't use these ores to smelt into plates, I would still smelt the plates and at least, at the very least, if not use them, store them in chests because the you're essentially converting your thousands of ash that were in these boxes into far fewer items to have to deal with. Uh, it just, it makes it so that it's not 
as big of a problem for a bit longer until you get access to burners. And once you have burners, you never have to really think too much about ash again as an issue because by that point, well, you are now trained on how to deal with the ash on outputs from machines. That part doesn't necessarily change too awfully much. But also by that point, you're thinking about getting access into uh, electric mining drills, which of course don't run off of solid fuels. You'll have uh, better access to electric uh, assembling machines those don't use the fuel anymore so all of that extra logistics work goes away where you will need to still worry about it is in the production of power and you do have to continue to worry about it even in later phases of the game you will still be dealing with burning of fuels that produce ash most likely, including situations like this with high alternative energy, adding in coal power plants that are taking in coal, producing ash, but also heating up salt, molten salt, to uh, end up producing energy out of in steam turbines at a far better ratio than something like this. With that, we have covered Ash uh, in uh, about as complete a way as I can think of at this moment in time. I would like to thank you all for watching. This has been a Taku Showboat with Ollie and with Dolly behind my head. If you have enjoyed today's video, please be sure to do all of the social and engagement stuff down below. Leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe if you have not yet subscribed, and hit the notification bell. Consider becoming a member of the channel by hitting the great big blue join button and supporting on Patreon at patreon.com slash show. But if you are so inclined and able, if you have further questions about Pyanodon's mods, you can consult with the community discord, which... The link is right there. You could also join my Discord through the link in the description below this video. I hope to see you all on the next one.